I'm Chris, and this is my friend Josh, and this is my friend Anna. They're both part of my pack of dogs. Welcome to another, another round of training tips. And today I want to talk about knowing what you've got on the end of the leash. You'll hear me say that a lot. I put it in a lot of my uh, training documents and evaluations and so forth. To know what you've got on the end of the leash. Dogs, certainly all dogs, have a lot in common. They have so many traits that are characteristic of dogs. Digestive, the way that they process food, the way that they think, their you know, physiology and so forth. They share so many commonalities, but they're also very diverse. As a matter of fact, because of human genetic diversity intervention and genetic manipulation, selective breeding, if you will, dogs have the most variety of any species, of any species on the face of the earth. We have so many different breeds of dogs. It's really important that you understand, yeah, you've got a dog, but they're not all the same. One size does not fit all. You need to consider that with regard to training. You need to consider that with regard to where you live and if you would like to have a dog and what breed of dog best suits your lifestyle. Not all dogs are going to suit your lifestyle, but there are many to choose from. But please understand what you've got because they are different. Josh, for example, is a sight hound. He's one of several different breeds of sight hounds. He's been genetically bred for a couple thousand years now to do a job a mile, two miles away from you. He doesn't need you to do his job. This is how he's hardwired. This is how he thinks. Compare Josh with a Border Collie. Border Collie has a very high work drive. The Border Collie can work and often works to some degree independently but is always looking for the human to direct them. Which herd? Where are we going now? What do I want you to do? The human directs where the dog should run and the dog will hold that position until the human tells the dog uh, to move livestock to another position and so forth. Very hard working uh, ethic, work ethic, uh, hard driving dog. Come here Hope. Come here, get up here. Hope is a rat terrier. It's an American breed. Come on. Let's go. Good girl. Let's go. Yeah. And again, understanding what you've got on the end of the leash. Hope is a terrier, and she's a true terrier. She will screech in a way that will wake the dead. She has a very high prey drive for small animals. She, I didn't have to train her to kill mice. I didn't have to train her to do that. She has eradicated my yard of voles, and I didn't have to train her to do that. We have bred her, um, hardwired her, for those kinds of characteristics. So getting back to understanding what you have on the end of the leash, that goes in part with, you know, what are the expectations of the dog in my house? What are the expectations of the dog in training, for example? I have chihuahuas, wonderful companion animal. Not for everyone, I understand that, but a wonderful, very popular companion animal. Try as we might, we're not going to train chihuahuas to run into the water into a lake to leave my side and run directly into a lake and to swim in the direction that I point until it finds the dead bird out there and to bring it back to me or bring any item back to me. I mean I recognize that a chihuahua can't bring a, a duck back physically but I can't train a chihuahua to stare in this direction, go out, hit the water, start swimming until you find what I've told you is out there and then bring it back to me. But I can train a lab to do that because we've hardwired labs to do that. We've hardwired them through selective breeding. That's what makes them such extraordinary service dogs because we have bred them to continually look to us for direction. Tell me where the bird is, the dog said. Tell me where it is. I'll go get it. I'll go get it. Where's the bird? That easily translates to a tennis ball. That easily translates to a set of keys or an item for a, um, a disabled person to offer assistance to. Not all dogs can do those tasks. It doesn't make them unintelligent. It doesn't make them less intelligent. It's just that they're different. We need to appreciate those differences and those nuances when we're traveling with a dog, when we're selecting a dog, when we have a dog in the house and so forth, whether we want more than one dog in the house. Not all breeds are suited to that and so forth. So please, Along with the dog's personal experience, how it's been raised and so forth, how you know its level of socialization, what are its life's experiences, please always consider what you've got on the end of the leash. Your dog's well-being depends on it. Your dog's happiness depends on it. Your dog's fulfillment depends on it. 
So thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, love your dog, praise your dog, and remember what you've got on the end of the leash. Thank you.